Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Was Betrayed Sealed in Tartarus and Got Trained by Eskiner, Meliodas and Ban The Three Sins Part 2. Before we start please go support Ankaligan in the black for writing that awesome fanfic. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Deku is a male in this story. Chapter 9 Demons. At UA everyone was at peace, no one had any problems, even Izuku was with his girls trying to rest as much as possible, since they didn't have many things to do at that same time, despite the fact that the young demon managed to feel something was happening with the seal of the commandments, without knowing exactly what it was. Momo. I think you seem a little pensive, you don't seem to be spending much time with us lately. Izuku. It's not that, I think something is going on with the demons. Jiru. I don't think that just because Zeldris appeared out of nowhere a little while ago the demons will try to attack us, that is a very risky move by Zeldris who is alone. Izuku. I know, but it's still strange that I feel like something is happening with the seal of the commandments, I left them in one part, but I think something is happening to it. Momo. So you think something bad is happening with the commandments in that case, I think that kind of thing makes a bit of sense. Najire. Although if the demons try to be released, like leaving to be in this world, that means they're going to try to attack or something like that, and that's not good for the city that's barely doing well. Izuku. I know, that's why I'm quite worried about the commandments, if they were to try to do something like that or at least have a way to seek more power, then we won't be able to do anything about it, it's going to be an even bigger problem than I thought. The girls heard this while they just listened to how someone came in, so they could go see who it was, being some of the boys. Hiroshima. Hey Izu bro, it seems you're very busy. Izuku. What's wrong Kirishima? We know you don't always come for simple things. Kirishima. Well, it's not for nothing, we just wanted to go in and pass the time, I don't think it's a good idea to be able to stay in the dormitories. Todoroki. Definitely not good. Izuku. Now what happened? The boys only looked at each other so they could start telling each other what was happening. Flashback. In the recreation room of class 2 they were just talking about one thing among themselves. Mina. I say we try to be able to do something like a party. Lita. Maybe we can get it back that way, it might actually be a good idea. Hiroshima. Not for nothing, but I don't think a party will fix everything and he doesn't like us, so he's even less likely to come to a party. Toru. It's not about that Hiroshima, if we can't bring someone to a party then we'll bring the party to that person, it's simpler than you think with this kind of thing. Todoroki. In fact, if someone doesn't want to go to a party, the worst idea is to bring that same party to their house. Okoyami. Especially when Izuku is calm with the girls, it is not a good idea to bother him when he is like that, because they know well that whenever he is bothered with her, they only manage to make him even angrier than before, and if our presence is already annoying for him, then it will be even worse. Uraka. Those damn hitches, they are surely the ones who caused my deku kun to change so much, they must be controlling him in one way or another, since it is impossible that he really has three such powerful quirks, and they suddenly appeared with another gift. Some nodded at her idea seeing that it was suspicious, well the three boys gave themselves a good punch in the face for such a stupid thing that the brunette said. Todoroki. Don't be idiots, you just made it so he could come back to you eh, and you want to push him away even further. When you have a dog scared of your presence, you don't get closer, but instead keep a certain distance so he can trust you again. Okoyami. Did you just compare Izuku to a dog? Todoroki. I couldn't find a better way to say it. Uraka. That's right, a dog all this time. Mina. You're a genius. Lita. Right now he's being used like a dog, no doubt those girls are thinking of using him until the end. Hiroshima. You can't be more idiotic, right? Just leave Izuku alone, don't keep bothering him thinking that he really needs you, he doesn't need us anymore, and we can't depend on him all the time, it's best that we keep our distance and let him gain confidence in us if you want him to get closer, learn a little. Lita. So you don't want to get that miserable Deku back again. Sado. If you don't want that, then it's better to go on, we don't have time for this kind of thing, you should know it pretty well. Haminari. We'll be able to continue on another path without you, we don't even need you to have a perfect plan to get him back, it's as simple as that. And flashback. Okoyami. And that happened at the end of everything. I think we got into trouble with the class, and you know how they are, if we went to our rooms they were going to try to do something to us, if we stayed where we were they were going to be a nuisance. Izuku. And that's why they came to this place, because they know that the only land in this academy that they are not able to step on without flying away first is near my house. Hiroshima. Exactly, that's why we want to spend some time. The young man stared at them trying to think of a way to have an answer with them, reaching a point, but before he could say it, he was interrupted by a person. Melissa. 
of course, they can stay with us, we can't let them continue bothering us, in the end we are bothered by that class anyway, the best thing is to take care of each other. Izuku. Hey, I didn't even give an answer. Momo. And you don't have to give it to them either, we just have to wait for them to come, so we can make it clear to them that we don't want to have anything to do with them. Hey me. That's true, it can't be that bad. Izuku. Okay, you can stay for a while, maybe Gother has something to help you with your class problems. And that he looks at Gother who was headless, scaring the boys. Gother. What do you need? Izuku. What happened to you just now? Momo. That's right, I forgot to tell you that since I had to do my experiment somewhere, I wanted to know a little more about Gother's body, nothing more than that. Izuku. Because I'm not surprised when these kinds of things happen. Hiroshima. How is he still alive? This doesn't make sense. Najire. Well, it turns out that Gother is a doll, nothing more than that. Gother. Nice to meet you, I'm Gother the Goat of Lust. Todoroki. This guy is a little scary. Izuku. Anyway, I think you can help them with the class matter if I'm not mistaken. Gother. Yeah, I handle that kind of stuff now. Outside where Class 2 was, they were just walking around thinking about being able to see the green-haired young man as soon as possible. Iraka. I'm sure he'll be excited to see us. Lita. It's true, he will understand that all this was a misunderstanding, and we will be colleagues again, even friends where everything will be able to improve as much as possible. Mina. We just have to be able to see them as soon as possible. Out of nowhere a pink ray began to pass through all of their heads, where Gother ended up appearing in front of them. Gother. Now all of you will leave without saying or doing anything, you will keep your distance so you can waste those things on matters that have nothing to do with Izuku if possible. They nodded as they walked away while Gother just started walking back to the rest. Todoroki. It's more effective than I thought. Hiroshima. I think we can be satisfied with that, thank you very much for that help Izu bro. Izuku. Nothing happens, now if they bother us again they just have to come and let me know, and this time it won't be Gother who will take care of them. Pay me. Hey, we already told you that there's no need to kill them, in fact you shouldn't even do that kind of thing. Izuku. I know that well, but I still plan to use other methods much more effective than murder, to be able to talk to them face to face. Okoyami. I don't know if I should be able to worry about that as much as possible, I even think it's quite scary to think about that kind of thing, when we don't even know what you're capable of doing. Izuku. It's not that bad, I'm just a little scary sometimes, when the time comes you'll see that I'm really not scary, it's nothing to worry about. He said this while just giving a smile to the group who, upon seeing that, only managed to utter a few words in their mouths. Hiroshima. If you're going to kill him, I'll take care of the evidence to avoid any evidence. Todoroki. I'm one of the people who might be trying to find out what happened to them. Tokoyami. And I'll recommend a place to dump the bodies, it's very effective. Izuku. I really don't understand why they jump with that kind of things to be honest. On the other side was the villain league with Zeldris in front of them sitting at a small table, drinking some coffee with his legs crossed wearing a business suit while behind him was Galland with a smile. Demura. What the hell are you planning, you bucking midget? Zeldris. First of all, don't call me that, otherwise you'll end up with a sword stuck in your chest. Second, screw their gnomus. I'm planning to make some changes that will lead to great improvements you can't imagine. Spinner. What makes you think we're going to do something like that? Zeldris. Seriously, if you don't want to end up destroyed internally, then I will definitely kill you, I am a demon, and I can do whatever I want, apart from being the son of the demon king, I think it gives me even more authority. Alan, If you refuse to cooperate, we will undoubtedly take advantage of the opportunity to kill you all without mercy, and keep everything we want. At the end of the day, you are simply humans playing with powers that are beyond your reach. Kurajiri. Although I don't like to say it, it seems that we will have certain problems if we want to challenge them, I can even say that they will kill us directly, I have no doubt about that kind of thing. Tamura. But I don't understand what they want to do with all this. Zeldris. We just want to free the rest of the demons, if we succeed we can conquer this insignificant world that you have, and possibly if you help us, we will give you a part of all this, nothing more than that I can offer you. Kurajiri. It's a bit unfair by the sound of it, but if we base it on the fact that you guys are above us in terms of power, then we really can't do anything about it in that case. Demura. You don't know how much I hate you right now for that very reason. Zeldris. Thank you, now I would like to know if possible your answer, if you are going to want to accept this deal, or if we will simply have to kill you. Alan. Please make it the second one, it's been a while since I've committed a massacre, and I want to start right now murdering people and consuming their miserable, disgusting souls. Zeldris. Please Galland, try to behave a little, we can't keep things out of control. Galland. 
whatever, I want to do it anyway. Demura. Well, we will try to help you as much as possible in everything we can, but we have limits on things like time, we just have to make that clear with you. Zeldris. Then we have a deal. He said it while appearing calm in the face of such a thing that was happening between them, as if it were nothing to them. Chapter 10 An Attack. At the UA Academy, all the people were calm without the slightest problem for them, since in truth nothing bad was happening at the moment, it was literally a zone of peace or well that was going to last for a certain time. Currently Azuku was resting with the girls who came to have a smile for the same reason. Melissa. Now what do you plan to do? Azuku. What are you talking about? Melissa. Well, the whole Demon King thing, we all know that's something that really eats you up inside. Jiru. At the end of the day you literally have three sins inside your body, and let's say one of those sins is Meliodas, therefore the Demon King is going to want to come for you. Azuku. Yes, he will try, but he can't do anything about it. Amy. What do you mean? Azuku. Well, let's say that the simple fact that I am a person even stronger than the rest of the people, is not only that, but inside my body remember that I have Ban and Eskiner, other sins that are not exactly to the liking of the Demon King. Momo. No matter how much anyone tries to deny it, it's true, while Ban was able to battle the Demon King by controlling Meliota's body, Eskiner had the same result against the Demon King using Zeldris's body, although it's a shame that he doesn't remember that, otherwise he would be supporting us. Azuku. Until the Demon King dies we have no choice but to do it. Amy. It means that in the meantime we have to keep waiting. Azuku. Yes, I don't think I should interfere with Zeldris's plans for the moment, it really is a bad idea. Najire. Why do you say that? In a way, he is your brother and he needs your help in the same way that we may need his help. Azuku. Well, let's say that not remembering how my father took his body leads to the reason why he still has a certain hatred for me, I'm not sure to what extent he can't remember anything, but I can easily say that it's been quite a while that he doesn't remember, if he were to go, it would only be to fight, therefore it's not a good idea to try to do something about it. Momo. I think that's true, we should stay away until something important happens. Azuku. As long as he doesn't try to release demons like Monspeet or some like Esterasa, we can remain calm. He said this as he just went on to touch Melissa's breasts making her blush, while Kami went on to hit her on the head for that very thing. Kami. What do you think you're doing, idiot? Azuku. Well, clearly checking that she is okay, among all of us I can say that Melissa is the one who usually reacts the most, getting scared, and the best way to see it is by feeling her heart. Momo. But it's not done that way. Azuku. What was missing, I got medicine. Melissa just gave a slight smile at the young man's chibi face, until they saw Gother begin to open the door, who was a little agitated. Najire. What's going on? Gother. It's a serious matter, it seems that some demons are approaching at a certain speed, there are too many of them, and they are coming to the academy. Azuku. With that happening, I think we can take care of it. Melissa. That's true, it can't be a very big problem. He said this as they began to leave, and the academy suddenly ended up receiving some fireballs, so that they could notice from a distance how it was actually Nomus attacking the academy. Azuku. I think you were wrong Gother, those things aren't demons. Gother. But I was sure I could sense a demonic presence in the distance. At that the young man sighed as he launched himself against the Nomus, beginning to cut them into pieces as if they were nothing, causing them to fall to the floor little by little, broken into different pieces before the eyes of the students who had just arrived. Akugo. Here we go, let's eliminate those things. Melissa. A little late, I think we can take care of this. He said this while using a sphere of light, causing one of the Nomus to fall to the ground due to the wound in front of the rest, who only noticed how in a short time Izuku managed to finish off all the Nomus in the area, as if it were nothing while he sighed. Izuku. I guess this meeting is over in the end, they didn't put up as much of a fight as I thought. Jiru. Well, we are currently the strongest, I don't think they can really put up that much of a fight. Najire. We better go back to rest, we have nothing to do with these things. They began to walk a little so that at one point it was something against Izuku who ended up cutting him in half, as if it were nothing while he watched as it was a hand that was in the air. But from one moment to another it began to take out a dark matter to be able to join with its other half and continue in that way, until it was completely assembled before the eyes of the young man who noticed how the rest of the Nomus began to take out the same dark matter to be able to rebuild their bodies. Gother. That's where the demon's power came from. Sado. What's wrong with those Nomus? That shouldn't happen normally. Hiroshima. I guess we'll have to fight. Momo. What do you think about this? Izuku. Well, I'm saying that we literally have to fight a bit against the Nomus at the end of the matter, and that my brother is making deals with people I didn't expect. 
but that the gnomus began to arm themselves, but out of nowhere a spear began to pierce them like rocks that began to fall on top of each one of them. Hey me. Then let's put an end to these things before they get stronger. Najire. Or they may get the chance to rebuild themselves. At that, the young man began to let out his demonic mark to launch himself into combat with an attack using the flames of purgatory, he managed to destroy the gnomus that were near him, while he was making his way through everyone, as if it were nothing to him, who just kept moving forward without further ado. Tamura. It seems that my gnomus are still putting up a fight at the end of the day, I think your improvements were really going to be of some use. Zeldris. I told you, idiot, this way we can finish off that bastard, when he learns well what happens when he defies me. Tamura. Although if you keep touching the doctor's Noma so much, he's going to get very angry. Aland. If he dares to bother us then I will personally eat his soul. Zeldris. Don't do it, idiot, we still need that doctor alive, we must end his life before my father manages to come to this world. He said this as he stared at the battle that was taking place where Izuku was only advancing, while destroying more Nomas along the way, and with that he was on top of the Nomas who stared at them. Momo. I think it's time to do it. Hey me. Are you sure? Last time we tried to do something like this we really ended up badly. Jiru. If we don't do it, those things will end up dispersing and to be honest, I don't plan on starting to look for him everywhere, as if I were his babysitter, so I want you to really do something now. But that they sighed as they began the attack as the gnomus began to be surrounded little by little, thanks to the winds that Jiru created, causing them to begin to get tighter, not to mention that Najire took advantage of the spear to keep them in a place where no one could get hurt. After that the students went on to see how thanks to Kimi some rocks rose where they began to surround the gnomus, leaving no more escape than above, where to finish off both Izuku and Melissa ended up on top, where on Melissa's side, she managed to launch a fairly large arc, and on Izuku's side, it was a cruel sun hitting the center of the area, beginning to eliminate the gnomus little by little where. The class watched the great attack that was contained by a perfect cube of Momo who had a smile, leaving everyone surprised at such skill, they had to coordinate it in a single attack. Izuku. Well, I guess we got these things done in the end, it was actually easier than I thought. Momo. Although there was some damage that we didn't take into account. Mina. How did they do that? They literally wiped out all that stuff in a flash. Melissa. Well, it was a special attack that we were practicing, we were hoping to use it as a surprise for you later, in case we ever had to face each other. Todoroki. In short, they were planning to kill us. At that they stared at the group who were laughing slightly nervously. Izuku. Well, I don't see the part that's unfair, you guys tried to kill me, so it's only fair that I do the exact same thing. Hey me. We are the extra part, I guess it's not bad if I'm not mistaken. Sado. In a way they are telling the truth. Uraka. But it's unfair anyway, they are training even without us in secret, we are supposed to be a class. Izuku. Yes, we are a class, but everyone taking the things they want to do on their own is another important detail that they never wanted to see, they clearly never took into account the probabilities of this type of matters. Lita. Maybe that's true, but we're your teammates anyway, you should be able to have a little trust. Izuku. What a genius, I don't understand why it didn't occur to me before, to ask and tell things to the people who tried to kill me, the people who didn't trust me, those who betrayed me, you really outdo yourself more and more Lita, you really outdo yourself more and more each time. Lita. But really. Before he finished speaking, they saw the young man begin to walk away from them. Izuku. You know something, I'm not going to waste any more time with people who can't understand a damn thing I'm telling them. But that they walked away before the eyes of the class. Najire. What are you going to do now? Izuku. Well, it looks like I'll have to visit my brother eventually, I had no idea this kind of thing was actually necessary. Momo. Then we have to prepare for anything that happens in the process. Izuku. I think so, this is going to get crazier than I imagined. He said this while walking with the girls and at the same time thinking about how to solve the problem of his brother, who was slowly releasing more demons from the seal, in order to have the opportunity to finish off all those who stand in his way. Chapter 11 Just Talk In a part of Japan, Izuku was flying through the city trying to find his brother's presence, until he reached a forest where he wanted to continue his path, until he was at the top of a mountain, where he only looked everywhere trying to find an answer about it. Izuku. I know you're around here Zeldris, don't try to hide. At that moment the other high class demon began to emerge. Zeldris. Why are you here? I'm very busy. Izuku. I came because I am aware that some villains began to show demonic signs, and until now for that kind of thing to happen a demon must be giving that kind of things. Zeldris. So you only came to find out about that demon if I'm not mistaken. Izuku. 
Of course not, don't try to pretend with me brother, we both know perfectly well that you are the main cause of putting together this kind of things. As Eldris. That's strange, I don't remember that kind of thing happening the way you're telling me, and if it did I would remember it pretty well. Izuku. Please brother, you don't know the selfishness of villains like me, those guys just want you to give them more power, so that when the time comes they end up betraying you, don't start something that you'll end up regretting completely. As Eldris. How do I start something I regret? You're wrong, I'm just trying to finish something before you make it worse, the holy war started because of Meliodas, then the deadly sins wanted to follow him, and if it weren't for the fact that that human, the immortal and my brother wanted to give you that power in your hands, none of this would be happening. Right now we could only live in peace without the need to have conflicts everywhere. Izuku. I understand that very well, but I just want to have the chance for this to be between us, although the truth is that I only seek to destroy the demon king, I want that guy's head and not yours. Zeldris. It's a shame that's impossible, an alliance between us to overthrow the demon king is going to be impossible. Izuku. And what could that guy be offering you that I can't? I'm trying to give you a life of peace and quiet, to end this war before anyone else gets killed, but I'll never be able to do it that way if I don't have you as my ally. Zeldris. That's because the demon king has Jelda, I can't turn my back on him while he has her, and I don't plan on doing so, while Jelda is in his hands, then I can't turn my back on the demons like what happened to you, these are simple things you have to keep in mind. The young man remained silent at such a thing while looking at his brother who was met with a completely angry look. Izuku. I understand, I would like to save her so that in that way I do not end up including them in this senseless war. Zeldris. You're not going to save her, the only person who can save Jelda is me, and I'll do it when I've cut off your head and brought it to my father, now we're done talking, you can do whatever you want boys. Izuku. What do you mean, whatever you want? At one point the rocks began to move to try to crush him, but he was barely able to dodge it to avoid a large amount of fire that went directly towards him, and as soon as he was able to touch the ground, he had to stop a blow that was aimed directly at his chest. Izuku. I haven't seen any of you in a while, Froden, Droll, Monspeed. The three demons began to walk towards him as they began to prepare for combat. Monspeed. I hope this ends up hurting you a lot, because everything that comes close to pain is what you deserve for being with the clan of goddesses who murdered hundreds of my brothers. He said this as they passed by attacking Izuku who began to dodge them until he took distance with a smile, while keeping his gaze on everyone. Izuku. It's good that you brought reinforcements likewise. At one point Droll ended up receiving a hammer in his face, Froden was received by a spear, and Monspi tried to get away by flying upwards, but was teleported back to where he was where he ended up receiving a ray of light in his entire chest, causing him to fall to the ground. Zeldris. It seems the deadly sins came about the same way my brother did to pass my power on to someone else. Hey me. I hope you don't take it personally, we're just trying to do things in a better way. Momo. Although we ended up in conflict out of pity, I told you that your brother was going to try to do this kind of thing. Izuku. Yes you said so, but now I just want to focus on what we're doing. Momo. Whatever, at the end of this you're going to owe us a lot of things. The group looked at the demons who were recovering from the damage received by the attack, being that they only remained firm in the face of things. Izuku. I hope that at least with this we have agreed on something, but I would like you to at least understand that we must destroy the demon king, no matter how, but we must destroy him before he tries to do something, since he is only using you to fulfill his goals. Zeldris. Of course I have a good idea of the things he only uses me for, but when he's done using me at least I'll be able to have Jelda with me again. But that they began to leave, and it didn't take long for them to arrive at the UA, where the young man was left thinking about the things that happened due to such details. Both are. It doesn't seem like he's willing to accept even a temporary peace deal. Izuku. He didn't want it, to make matters worse while the demon king has his beloved we won't be able to do anything to him at least, we are completely defenseless, while they still have the League of Villains to create their own ranks. Melissa. Then we must have a group that supports us in the same way. Izuku. But who can be our group? The young man looked at Melissa who had a smile while she had a smile in which Izuku was able to understand what she was planning to do. Izuku. No, I don't plan on doing that, there's no way I'm going to do anything like accept these kinds of terms that I wouldn't even want to have at least. The boy only stood firm in the decision he was making under the gaze of Melissa, who kept her smile despite everything. After a while, Izuku himself was with the girls and Gother in front of all the teachers like the director and some professional heroes, who could not understand his requests. All Might. What do you want to do? Melissa. An army with you and at the same time using the students of the academy. Azawa. Not at all, I'm not planning on building an army with my children who put themselves in danger all the time. Gother. 
if you think about it, you have no choice but to accept these terms, otherwise you all want to end up dead. Nezu. I want to know exactly what's going on, because they seem too desperate to be true about having a group in all this or rather an army. Izuku. In short, what happens is that the demons, the demon king, do not have enough power as troops within this place, that is why they turn to the League of Villains who created the Gnomus, with the help of the demons they will enhance their power to make them even stronger than before. Endeavor. Are you idiots? The Gnomus only listen to the League of Villains, it's impossible for them to pay any attention to the demons' orders. Momo. You are wrong, once a being ends up having the blood of a demon inside their body and develop certain abilities unique to demons, such as rebuilding limbs with dark matter or using other abilities, they will already be under the control of higher demons, such as the Ten Commandments. Izuku. That's why we need to have an army that can counteract the power of the demons, the League of Villains can use that power against us, and when they finish with us, it will be the moment where the demons will take advantage of every opportunity to be able to take this world for themselves. All Might. How are you so sure of your words? We can't have complete confidence in everything you're saying. Pay me. Maybe not, but they can take our advice, and we are sure that this kind of thing will happen once we can't fight them. Izuku. If you really want people to live in peace, to be safe, the best thing to do is to go against the demons and keep the League of Villains at bay, since they are not going to be as big a threat as the rest. Nezu. This all sounds good, but how strong is this demon king? Izuku. Enough to be able to crush whoever gets in his way, none of them will be able to stop him if I don't. All Might. I think you're exaggerating too much, I can fight any villain that stands before me. Izuku. Yes, you can fight any villain, but I assure you that when you fight the Demon King, it will be as if you were fighting all for 120 times in a row at the same time and against someone who is at full power. The boy's words made them doubt while they were just left thinking of a way to respond to all the information that the young man gave until something came to mind. Nezu. If it's going to be that dangerous, then you can rest assured that you'll have my support. All Might. Are you joking, Director? Sniper. It seems not, it is best to be able to make this deal as soon as possible. Nezu. We can let him take care of the students starting tomorrow so we can make them stronger, all heroes must receive special training apparently. He said it with a smile, well Izuku could only be grateful for such a thing, without having any idea that in a short time other people were going to arrive who were not exactly from purgatory. Chapter 12. The green-haired young man was training, trying to distract his mind a little, taking into account how the commandments were free, and now there was the possibility that the demon king would return to the place, being the most dangerous thing he could have faced in his life. Jiru. How long has he been like this? Melissa. It's been a while, I have no idea what's going on in his mind. Momo. We can try to go and find out what's going on, talking to him can always help, he's not going to keep his distance all the time. Melissa if you think so. The three of them began to go towards the young man, who was increasingly managing to increase the number of attacks he was able to do with his divine cuts. Izuku. A little more, I just have to do it a little more. Melissa. Sorry Izuku, but you don't have to continue like this. Izuku. What do you mean? Momo. Since you came back from talking to Zeldris you haven't stopped training, and that worries us in part, having you training all the time like this may not seem positive in the end. Izuku. So that was it, you don't have to worry at all, I'm totally fine. Momo. It doesn't seem like it, you tried to use all your magic power more than once, but you don't do it at the same time, that can't mean it ends up being something good, and you know that better than anyone. Izuku. Well, I accept that I tried to use my power more than once, but it is not something easy to handle how to control it, you must understand. Jiru. It's too much what you're going through, but at the same time it doesn't make sense to distract your mind with training, in the end it's all going to make you go back to the same hole you ended up getting out of before. The young man thought about what she was telling him to make him think a bit, until he gave a rather long sigh at such a thing. Izuku. Well, I accept that I was out of control many times because of this matter, but I also can't just let go of my mind those ways they had of being, Zeldris, Droll, Galland, Monspeed, they and more demons are going to be released sooner or later, I can't let them get away with it, and much less taking into account the League of Villains, not to mention that I'm still with this class thing. I can't let any of this get away from me like this in any way, I'm just not going to let it go. The young man only took his sword while he thought about those things again trying to have an answer, until he ended up receiving a hug from the girls, making him calm down in the face of such a thing, so that those thoughts would begin to go away again until they separated. Melissa. We better go get something to eat, you've been burning off some energy. When they were thinking about leaving, only for the young man to end up receiving a kick from a person who sent him flying through some trees, worrying the girls who were thinking about going for him, but a circle of water began to surround them in the place. Melissa. 
What's wrong? Jiru. It's a very powerful magic. Momo. It had to be them, the four archangels. At that they saw Mayo, Seriel and Tarmiel descending from the sky little by little. Each one stood in front of the girls, Tarmiel of Momo, Seriel of Jiru and Mayo of Melissa who stared at such a thing. Momo. Can I know what they are doing? Seriel. It's simple, we felt that the seal of the commandments was breaking little by little, we can't let this kind of things get out of hand, so we decided to come ourselves. Tarmiel. By the way, seeing the reincarnation of Princess Elizabeth is something very important. Mail. I hope it was some help, I say this for the simple fact that they were facing a demon. Melissa. That demon you're talking about is simply a person very close to us. Serial. Yes, but since we are in the place we managed to see them when the fairy princess, the most powerful sorceress and the princess of the goddesses were reincarnated. Tarmiel. We hope you can join us, if it is not a problem. Momo. You can save yourself the trouble and the other inconveniences, the two of us aren't planning on going with someone who can get wet every second, or who blows wind all the time. At that, the two of them felt like they had been stabbed in the heart for being depressed. Mail. Now you can see what I felt a long time ago. Melissa. Don't be too happy because I'm still the same as before, nothing changed. The three of them were already in bad shape, but from one moment to the next male had to block a kick that was going straight to his face, causing him to move away, followed by Tarmiel seeing a dark mass that was going against him and having to leave alone, so that Serial was missing. Who went for a sword that was going against him, causing him to move away from the place where the three of them were thinking of counterattacking, but they saw how Izuku, the one who caused the attack, went on to create a cruel sun to drive them away. Tarmiel. How is this possible? I managed to create a fireball that can only be done if you have Mail's grace, it can't be possible. Serial. You're even on our side right now. Mail. I had to assume, that's not funny. Serial. What do you mean? Mail. My grace managed to choose Eskiner a long time ago when his own soul shone like the sun itself, it was as powerful as my divine grace, and I am sure that when he went with this young man, he did not give him my grace, rather he gave him his soul converted into magic, being known as the new sunshine, without a doubt something that he expected no less from this moment. Izuku. If you're done talking so much, I want to know exactly what you three are doing in this place. Male. It's simple, we came to put an end to the commandments as they should be done. Izuku. Well if they came for that, they must not be because of any of the three of them, it is better that they keep their distance for their own good. Serial. I had to assume so, it seems we are dealing with someone who is completely stronger than he seems, but you are in luck, we plan to join your cause. Izuku. What are you talking about? Serial. We came especially because we wish to form an alliance with you until this war is over. At that the young man started to smile as he looked at the group. Tarmiel. I don't understand what's funny, even though we were the only ones who came because if we let Ludosiel come he was going to try to kill you. Izuku. The proud archangels put aside their pride when they knew they couldn't fight so many demons, that's why they came for me because they don't want to have their ranks in front of the fire to fight, it's something so normal for you when you spend all your time like this. Male. But we want to know if you really intend to help us. Izuku. If I help you exactly, I want to know what you really came looking for, the commandments with a threat to you, but nevertheless you came for another fact apart from all this, and if Ludosiel did not come because he would be capable of trying to kill me, that means that there is something else behind all this. They are trying to hide from me another detail even more important than the previous ones if I am not mistaken. Serial. Well, you caught us red-handed, we took into account that you are a possible future threat to the goddess clan, you possess the power of three sins in total, and they are not just any of those sins. Tarmiel. The Lion of Pride Eskin are the most powerful human that has ever existed in his life having enough power to crush whoever got in his way, even making the demon king himself retreat in fear from him at one point in his life, he even still has traumas from that sin. Serial. The immortal bandit ban, sin of greed, the only being who is not a demon, but managed to enter and leave the same purgatory alive, having the possibility of facing the demon king in the same way, being on equal terms at one point in the battle. Male. And not by far to leave aside talking about Meliodas the sin of wrath, eldest son of the demon king having enough power to face me, the most powerful archangel, as well as at the same time being able to spread terror in the clan of the goddesses, making even some of us think twice or even more before attacking him. Izuku. Wow, if you say it that way it sounds kind of flattering to have all this power on my shoulders. Serial. Not by much. Male. We see that power as a possible threat to the goddess clan, we wish you would be kind enough to give us that power, so that we can do our best not to confront each other once the war is over. Tarmiel. You will only be able to retain the power of one sin. Izuku. It seems like you guys don't understand, right? 
At that I stare at the three of them, and at one point they began to feel a pressure on their bodies, while at the same time their strength was decreasing greatly. Carmiel. What does this mean? It is completely impossible for us to sense this. Serial. It's almost as if we were in the same purgatory. When they raised their heads they noticed Izuku in front of them with a serious look, causing them to start backing away a little. Izuku. Understand one thing, I earned this power because you trusted me, you gave it to me with your own will to prevent you from doing things like this, it doesn't matter if it's the demon clan or the goddess clan, the two clans must return to their respective worlds and leave this plane forever, I can't let people's lives continue to be mistreated by you. Serial. What do you mean, mistreated by us? We're fighting on the same side. Izuku. If we fight on the same side, but they fight without risking their ranks, all the goddesses keep their distance as much as possible, while humans suffer the possibility of dying immediately by a demon, as if it were nothing, do not think that I am not capable of not noticing you damn wretch. Male. Okay, we leave right now. But that he stopped putting more pressure on them to start leaving, and Izuku went down, while keeping his gaze on the three of them. Jiru. Do you think they will come back? Izuku. Most likely yes, they shouldn't take long to return, and without a doubt the supreme deity will not be happy at all when he finds out that his best warriors were subdued in that way. Momo. It happens to them because they let their guard down considering you weren't a threat right now. But that they began to leave the place walking slowly, trying to maintain the certainty that sooner or later they were going to try another of those things no matter what. Chapter 13 Are You Red? In the city Izuku was walking with Melissa even though he was only with her because the other girls were busy, and although the young man was walking with a beautiful blonde he had a problem, and it was that something inside his mind would not leave him alone. Melissa. Is something wrong Izu? Izuku. It's nothing in particular, but rather a doubt inside my mind. Melissa. Any questions? You can tell me anything and you know it well. Izuku. It's about male, among the four who returned I'm most worried about him. Melissa. Why do you say that? Izuku. Well, I was able to feel Esteras's magical power, but also males, and he was with us. Melissa. Are you worried that Esterasa has returned? Izuku. Yes, in case he were returned I have no idea of the possibilities that he would be with more power than he had before, it even leaves me doubting many things about Mail himself, if it really is him or he pretends to be. The girl managed to understand about the things that were going through Izuku's mind until the young man sighed. Izuku. How long do you plan to continue with this? I went to grab a piece of trash to throw it towards a part where it hit someone's head where some UA members came out. Izuku. What do you want now? I'm busy. Mina. We just want you to give us the chance to have that power. Izuku. Are they talking about the power I have? I'm afraid not, that's impossible. Sado. But the girls managed to have a huge increase in power as if it were nothing, we can't understand that, and we want you to explain it to us right now. Mineta. Even the beautiful Melissa manages to have the ability to confront those demons. Melissa. That's because we were blessed by very strong people who think we are worthy of having their abilities, that's why we can have this power and you can't. Uraka. Are you really leaving me for that hitch? But that said, young Izuku and Melissa looked at Uraka with a bottle of alcohol in her hands, quite angry. Uraka. You're planning to leave me for that hitch like it's nothing. Izuku. This is what I was missing, a crazy woman who was never able to forget me, even though she herself turned her back on me a long time ago. Ida. That's enough, as the current president of Class A, I demand that you tell us the way to have that power right now, or else you're going to have serious problems. Izuku. Really? And with whom? He seemed quite calm until he managed to feel something behind him, so that in the middle of the place, there was a huge explosion that lasted a few moments before there was a large cloud of smoke which lasted a few moments, but managed to start to go away, leaving a shield of light created by Melissa herself who was serious. Melissa. That was close. Izuku. Great, he managed to catch me off guard in time while I was taking care of the other idiots, I never imagined I would have this kind of problems. The young man watched as Esterasa himself, smiling, slowly descended from the sky. Esterasa. It's a pleasure to see you again, little brother. It's been a while since we last saw each other. Come and give me a hug like the good brothers that we are. Izuku. Instead of a hug, I think it's better if we try to see other things, like the reason for that attack. Esterasa. That's true, my attack was a little greeting, so you can't bother me while I'm busy. Izuku. Being busy with what? And with what thing? Esterasa. I think you were going to notice. I take a better look at Melissa from head to toe being noticed by Izuku who stood in front of her. Esterasa. No matter how much you change your appearance, I can still feel your presence Elizabeth and you are still so beautiful, you have no idea how much I am truly going to enjoy this. Izuku. 
you better go Melissa, I have no idea of Esteros's current power, but if that attack was a greeting, it means that his power is still hidden. Melissa. What about the rest of the class? Izuku. You better go, this fight isn't going to be easy. The group began to move away little by little, while Esterasa had a smile for this very reason. Esterasa. Where are you going? Let's play for a while. He tried to launch himself towards the group, but was stopped by Izuku who kicked him, sending him upwards where he tried to continue with a flurry of punches to the face of Esterasa himself, who began to back away further until at one point his arm was taken by the white-haired man. Esterasa. Don't get excited, we're just starting to have fun together. With a few turns he managed to throw him towards some cars, where the same demon launched himself against Izuku, who barely managed to get out between the pieces of metal, to begin to dodge the continuous attacks of the same man who tried to advance, only so that he would show his demonic mark beginning to have an even fight with Esterasa, where they had a fist clash between the two. Izuku. Tell me the truth, are you just a being who claims to be Esterasa, or are you really male who is pretending to be him again to stay with Melissa? The demon smiled at how the young man had no idea what exactly he was. Esterasa. Unfortunately I cannot say, we will have to leave it as existential doubt for the moment until we can have another answer. But that he went on to grab him and knee him in the stomach, followed by a right hook that sent him flying, in order to continue the attack towards Izuku's body, who was barely able to dodge it, although he did receive some blows from Esterasa who proved to be quite superior, and even more so when he saw how the demonic mark was leaving his body. Esterasa. Once I'm done with you, that Melissa that you call Elizabeth is really going to be all mine. He tried to strike the young man again, but as soon as he tried he was stopped by Izuku's naked calm, where he managed to feel how his strength increased, and he noticed how his wounds began to go away little by little. Izuku. So Melissa will be yours, and who decided that? That you will be able to finish me off, and who decided that? Esterasa. This power, I haven't been able to feel it for a long time, I can't believe that this is actually happening again. The demon began to tremble with fear as he noticed how his body became bigger and more muscular at the same time, as an axe began to emerge from his body. Izuku. It's been a long time since this power was used against you, tell me one thing, Esterasa demon of love, how does fear feel? Esterasa. What the buck is going on? He barely tried to do something about it when he noticed how he threw the axe against him, making him only able to put a sword between the two of them, and due to the short time he was unable to use his full counter, so when they collided they remained for a while, until he was sent flying away, crashing into a building, and Izuku only began to stand up as if it were nothing. Izuku. Now I want you to do the same thing you did a long time ago before my magnificent power, kneel down and thank that coin if you found one for making you prostrate before a higher being. Esterasa. Damn, really if he has this power in his hands again that means I can't trust him. The demon launched himself against Izuku trying to cut him in some way, but the young man was able to dodge it in time, so that with a quick movement, he could hit the man in the ribs, causing him to end up falling to the floor, where he only watched as the young man tried to step on him which he had to dodge. Esterasa. That was close, but you still can't finish me off. He launched himself into the attack again to finish him off, but Izuku was able to avoid it, as if it weren't a big deal, only to connect another blow to his face, causing him to be on the ground again, as he began to notice that they were leaving him against the ropes. Izuku. Please, you forget that I know the full counter, we do not have the same one, but in both the same function is needed, I must attack you to do it, but if my attack is generated at a point where you are not able to get into position to use the full counter, that means that you are unable to use it. Esterasa. Not bad, it seems that I am really in serious trouble with you, but that is not going to stop me on my way to finishing you off. Izuku. Really. I want to see it now that I'm in front of you. The demon was preparing to fight, but at one point he saw more sins arriving, causing him to become frustrated. Esterasa. Unfortunately our battle will be for another time, but when that time comes I will undoubtedly finish you off. With that last word he raised his arm full of purple flames to hit it against the floor, making a huge explosion where the smoke went away, leaving only Izuku and no one else in the area, causing him to return to his normal state. Izuku. Then he ran away. Momo. What happened in this place? Izuku. It was Esterasa, it seems that after so many years alive he continues to cause destruction wherever he goes. Najire. What are you planning to do? Izuku. Nothing for now. Pay me. In that case, let's help people who are in trouble. The group began to help the people who were affected by the battle, so that as the minutes passed, Mail arrived at the place seeing everything. Mail. What happened here? Momo. It was just a battle between Izuku and a demon, although the demon managed to escape. Mail. In that case, I would like to know if I can help in any way. 
The group began to accept Mei a little by little, although Izuku only looked at him from a distance, thinking a little about that in his mind, if that man was really pretending to be good. Chapter 14 Doubts at the academy some were beginning to feel better with Mail's presence, since he gave quite a few visits, apart from the fact that he was almost always helping one or another student as well as the teachers. All this was happening while Izuku was on the roof of the UA quite thoughtful. Dother. You seem to be quite pensive right now. Izuku. Can you even tell? Dother. Just a little, but it seems like there's something that's been catching someone's attention. Izuku. You could say yes, it's about Mail. I want to know something important. Dother. What exactly happens to Mail then? Izuku. When you managed to change his mind to become Esterasa, did you always know how to differentiate it? Gother. I can say like a yes, I always knew it was Esterasa or Mail, in the end the real Gother was the one in charge of doing such a spell. Izuku. I see, do you think Mail might actually be pretending? Gother. I don't understand that question. Izuku. Just as you heard, Mail could always have been a person of light, but possibly when you transformed him into Esterasa, killing people gave him pleasure, but when he recovered his memories he felt bad, but there is a possibility that deep down he liked it and realized that to pretend to be good and continue killing people. Gother. I don't think it's that way, but it seems that's a possibility too. Izuku. I see. Gother. Do you think Mail might be pretending? Izuku. It could be, the demon that attacked me when Mail appeared was Esterasa himself, if he attacked me, and after a few moments when he left, Mail managed to appear, that means there is a possibility that he is pretending. Gother. Now I understand, I can't assure anything, but I also can't deny that he is pretending in front of us. Izuku. I have no way of knowing, but for that I would have to talk to him personally in a private place, or even ask you to get into his mind. Gother. You know if I do that and it has nothing to do with the demon that attacked you, that could lead to too big of problems. Izuku. I'll take that into account, but it would be my last option given our current situation. Gother. Okay, Captain, we'll keep that in mind, but for now it would be best to keep those suspicions out of our minds. Izuku. You better try to find some way to keep an eye on Mail without him noticing, we can't have the chance to get too confident with this kind of things. Gother. Makes sense, it would be better to leave now that we have the chance to make our moves. Izuku. Then I'll let you do whatever you want, let's just try to move without the rest noticing. Gother. But we should talk about this kind of things with the rest of the group. Izuku. I'll take care of that, but don't say anything for now. He said this as he walked away from the place where he couldn't get out of his mind, how it was possible that Mail was in that place at the same time that Esterasa was existing. Izuku. There must be some explanation, I have no idea what kind of things could be happening, but Mail must definitely have something to do with this and the Demon King. He was just trying to stay calm until someone covered his eyes from behind, followed by hearing a soft voice. Melissa tell me, who am I? The young man disappeared at such a thing and reappeared behind Melissa, beginning to touch her breasts with his eyes closed. Izuku. Judging by their size and how soft they are and those light moans you try to hide, you must surely be Melissa, right? I opened my eyes as I noticed the blush that was forming. Melissa. I don't think he needed to touch my breasts for that. Izuku. There's always a certain amount of stuff needed and I'm not complaining at all. Melissa. If you put it that way, where were you? We couldn't find you. Momo. We couldn't even find you around the bar. Izuku. I was talking to Gother, I was asking him for some favors while I could, they are to make me more sure about the demons and the commandments. And that he lightly noticed through the window how Gother was going behind one tree after another wearing black glasses while following Mail who couldn't notice him. Izuku. It must be a joke, at this rate he'll find out. Momo. Well, we'll have classes soon, but first we have to be sure if the commandments didn't send demons to spy on us. Jiru. If they were to do that, they would know about our schedules, and it would be a very weak point for us. Izuku. There won't be any need for that, Gother took care of that, he's watching the entire area, and surely if he finds any demon he'll inform us as soon as possible. Jiru. It makes a bit of sense, but I don't think we have any other choice but to listen to him. Izuku. Okay, let's go now. He said this while giving the girls a smile. After classes Izuku was just in the bar area by his room being quiet until Gother arrived at the place. Gother. He's already left this place. Izuku. What is your professional opinion? Gother. He doesn't seem to show any problems, he even appears completely normal, but if the demon Esterasa is really back, it means that Mail isn't all that good. Izuku. I see, do you have any idea where he went? Gother. Unfortunately I can't have that kind of thing without him finding out that I've been following him, and we'd rather avoid that. Izuku. 
That's true, especially because of your problem you have with him, since he discovered that you manipulated him, he is not able to have self-control when it comes to attacking you. Gother. That's a problem, so we have to find another way to move. Izuku. I would like to have one, but he is going to discover me, I think the best option is to be able to go and speak directly with Mail to find out what is happening. Gother. I would advise that if you were to do that and in case you find yourself in the right, it is possible that the Esterasa matter continues to affect him mentally from the past and he wants to attack you. Izuku. And I wouldn't want to have the possibility of losing an ally. Gother. That is a fundamental problem. Izuku. No way, you can go, we have nothing else to talk about until other similar events occur. Gother then left the place while the girls were entering, watching everything that was happening. Melissa. What's going on now? Seeing Gother in private isn't something you do very often. Izuku. It's nothing special. Najair. If it's nothing special then there won't be any problem with you telling it. Izuku. They're just things about the area, Gother was once a demon, so he has enough knowledge to be able to find certain demons that have a way of seeing very far, and he knows the distance they have. Amy. Don't you think it's too dangerous to send Gother alone? We should all go so we can help the men make the task easier. Izuku. That would be good, but first we must take other things into account, we can't just move around like nothing happened yet. Momo. You sound like something is limiting you too much. Izuku. It could be, I honestly have no idea what things might limit me or what things might not at this point. The young man lowered his head, but ended up being hugged by Melissa, causing him to calm down a little. Melissa. We know perfectly well that you will find a way to control yourself, we know that very well. The girls just went to hug Izuku who could only reciprocate in the same way. Izuku. I can say that as long as I have you guys I will be able to feel without any problem. He said this while he was in the girl's arms. Elsewhere, Zeldris was sitting on a throne where he was just calm. Zeldris. This is annoying, the demon's forces are not recovering as I wish, each time it takes longer than the last, and if that were not enough we cannot attack Izuku like the rest, it seems that they still have all that strength. Estrasa. I don't think you have to worry little brother, soon everyone will end up dead and we can celebrate cleanly. Zeldris. Do me a favor and don't call me little brother again, I care more about what you think about our new big brother. Estrasa. To be honest, it's not impressive at all, but we can't wait too long. Zeldris. What do you mean by that? Estrasa. I was able to see his power up close, at first it doesn't seem like anything new, I could even finish him off if I use all my strength, but since you said it was just for reconnaissance, then I didn't do anything. Zeldris. And in the end, what are you going to decide? Estrasa. We can only wait a little longer for our father's troops to conquer this world, but if we continue waiting too long, our new older brother will become such a big problem that not even we could control. Zeldris. I understand, then we must move against him as soon as possible, it is good that Mael is inside the academy or so we think. Estrasa. They don't even know who the real Mael is, but when they find out they'll be in for a bit of a surprise. He said this while giving a few small laughs at everything he said. Chapter 15 The Goddesses. In one part of the world, Izuku was going with Gother directly to the top of a mountain, where, once he arrived, the young man had no idea what was happening. Izuku why did you make me come to this point Gother? Gother we need to have a way to connect with the goddess clan and not have problems. Izuku but there are many entrances to go to their world and we can try some of them to be able to have them in front of us. Gother we can, but since we are two former members of the commandments, they will surely try to kill us, especially you for having the sunshine inside your body. Izuku that's true, I never thought that before. Gother that's why we have to have a way to call them, the best way to do it is how the average person thinks, by going as high as possible off the ground. Izuku that's why we came to this point, it's the highest we are and the furthest from sea level. Gother exactly, now that we have that in mind we can do our best to get started. Izuku well, what should I do? Gother just let out your demonic power, clearly the other commandments will feel it, but it won't matter because they are too far away to be able to do anything to you. The young man only listened to his friend and began to let out his demonic power, where he slowly went straight to heaven where he used his demonic mark in its second phase and began to wait a while for that. Izuku are you sure this is going to work? Gother it will surely work, we just have to wait a little. He said this as he looked up before he realized something. Gother watch your right. The young man listened to him to cover himself from a direct attack that was beginning to make him retreat so that he would end up going through some rocks for such a thing. Gother looks like it worked sooner than I expected. At one point he had to dodge a direct attack that was headed his way, where he managed to spot a head of white hair in the dust, which grabbed him by the neck in order to lift him into the air. Gother it's nice to see you again male. 
She looked at the man who looked upset while Izuku began to arrive at the place. Izuku wait a minute, don't do it. He was unable to continue after receiving a direct attack from Ludosil, who had arrived at the scene. Ludosil where do you think you're going, you dirty demon? Izuku don't get involved in this, I just came for mail. Immediately a current of air began to carry it in another direction, causing it to break some rocks. Serial. Well, you won't come any closer, I'm afraid you won't do anything. Carmiel, but if we all meet to be able to kill you. Ludosil we can finally kill this filthy demon and regain the sun's favor once and for all. They watched attentively for the next move of the young man who was with his sword in his hand, but in the same moment he dropped it, leaving it on the floor while he raised his hands, drawing everyone's attention. Izuku I didn't come to fight, I just want answers. They answers. Ludosil and what do I care? We're going to kill you anyway. Izuku it's a shame you can't do it. Ludosil who do you think you are to tell me that? He wanted to move forward, but immediately his face collided with something in front of him, so that he saw that it was an invisible wall before a cube came out. Ludosil what is this? Serial. What does it matter? I'll take care of breaking it now. He barely tried to move, and immediately a current of air went against him, causing him to end up moving from the place, shortly after Tarmiel was taken by his limbs by a large amount of rocks, and Mail, who was thinking of attacking, was driven away by an attack of light, causing him to only be able to stay apart. Mail, this magic is hers. Melissa don't you dare touch them. Ludosil fence with which the reincarnation of the traitor appeared. The man went on to see how the cube became smaller, making it impossible for him to move. Momo you better not talk, if you dare to touch my fiancé, it could go a little bad for you. Serial and that part about wind. Piero don't think that you're the only one capable of using the wind, there are many other people too. Amy and you've been surrounded for a while now, so don't try anything. Izuku but we didn't come here to fight either, I just want to get answers from Mail. Mail. What kind of answers? Izuku a while ago I managed to see Esterasa with my own eyes, Esterasa is supposed to have been deeply dead for a while, once you return to normal, I want to know what's going on. Ludosil what the hell are you talking about? Parmiel we don't know anything about that. Izuku what do you say? Mail we also thought that the Esterasa matter was over, I didn't even know he was alive or that you fraud against him. Izuku what do you mean? That's impossible. The gyre they must know at least something. Mail unfortunately we don't know anything, but if he was really able to come back that means there's something wrong, the truth is I don't even understand what's happening, because lately many members of the goddess clan have been disappearing, and we can't understand the reason. Carmiel when we felt your dark presence at this point we decided to come as soon as possible for answers. Serial but Ludosil had to attack you, and after that we thought that you were going to attack us, so we decided to continue with this matter. Dother that's why you were so upset, but we also couldn't understand it because we don't know anything about some goddesses, we even thought that you would not return to this part of the world. Izuku this is really bad go ahead and set them free. The girls listened to him so that the four of them could get closer to him. Ludosil tell me what you have in mind now. Izuku I can only think of a temporary alliance so we can stay together. Ludosil it must be a joke. Tarmiel we cannot make an alliance with you. Serial I think the same. Mail and why not do it? After hearing that, the three of them looked at Mail who approached the young man, before being able to let out a rather heavy sigh at what was happening. Mail I understand that you don't want to have a demon as an ally, the truth is that I don't like that idea either, but nevertheless. I only remembered a paradise with a large number of people with white wings flying around the place. Mail if with the help of this young man we can find our people then I won't think twice, I want to have two people with me as soon as possible, and not have a result like what happened a long time ago with what we did, it was a mistake to kill so many demons in such a vile way, and I'm afraid that they want to do the same, that's why I prefer to have him as an ally, rather than as an enemy. Ludosil have you gone crazy? Carmiel the truth is, if he says it like that, I have no choice but to follow him. Ludosil what do you mean? Serial. I say the same thing, it is impossible to ignore it when it comes to our people. The man looked at them for such a reason, getting frustrated so he couldn't look at the floor. Ludosil well, if we don't have any other option. The man could only accept the things that were happening while on the other hand in the League of Villains, they were quite hurt, while they could only go to a doctor in the middle of their experiment facilities. Shigaraki miserable Zeldris, this is the last time you're going to beat me up like this. Spinner at least say that it wasn't Esterasa who was angry this time, I heard that he isn't happy at all lately, and he's going to hurt whoever crosses his path for the smallest annoyance he has. Shigaraki anyway, when we manage to be superior to them we will finally have every opportunity to take control and be the strongest of all. Doctor. Anyway, we can only try to keep things under control with this. He said this while looking at a capsule that was simply gigantic. Twice in this. 
I'll be our latest and greatest experiment what happens if you fuse two things. The Nomu we sent to fight All Might at the USJ with a demon known as Endura, an ancient demon with a pure desire for destruction, mixed with the greatest dark power we've seen so far. Doctor without a doubt this Nomu will be the best. He just had a few laughs as the place shook, and a huge roar could be heard from the same container that echoed throughout the area. Chapter 16 I try to be the one. At the academy the students tried to keep things under control with their training, but at the same time, despite having some distrust in the young man with green hair, they could not find him. Hiroshima has anyone seen Izuku? We haven't seen him for a while. Mina now that you mention it, we can't even find it exactly. Bakugo although that piece of shit doesn't matter. The class was mixed from the part that didn't want to have the green-haired young man near, and those that were really starting to worry about him. The flash in the distance caught the attention of everyone who was approaching. Azawa. What could be happening now? When they arrived they only found a cave made by Momo who was guarding part of it. Azawa. What's happening now? Momo it's nothing special, we're just trying to see if its capabilities can surpass its limits, considering that it's a half-immortal or completely immortal body. Azawa limits. Immortal. They felt a tremor in the place only to see a head where Izuku was screaming inside that cube, but his scream was accompanied by flames that managed to jump over anything generating a heat so intense that no one can overshadow at that moment. Wrapped in those flames he seemed to want to increase his capabilities, all the power he had seemed to want to increase it at all costs, surprising the students with such a thing. Todoroki those flames are stronger than mine and my father's, surely. What kind of training is this? Melissa one where you try to get through the day and create a way that, instead of lasting a short time, can last as long as you want, and, to make it better, you can get it whenever you want. He told them, causing everyone to feel surprised by such a thing as they watched that situation. The young man's clothes were partly torn before his body grew greatly, obtaining the form of the one. His power left everyone surprised by what they were seeing, it was simply something unprecedented for the boy who was larger than before, where they lasted a few moments before an explosion was generated with a cloud of smoke that no one could do, so that Momo could take out that bucket, where from the smoke came out a tired Izuku quite exhausted from having used that form since noon had been more than four hours ago. Izuku well, it seems that I can at least use the one for ten seconds at least, enough time to be able to have everything under control. He spoke before he could fall, but was caught by Melissa who managed to hug them on the spot. Melissa surely at this rate you will be able to obtain better results. Izuku maybe. He said before touching Melissa's butt, causing her to blush and some people to look at him in annoyance. In the end, he separated before he could sit down where the girls began to approach him like Gother. Gother if you use the one outside of midday time you will only consume a lot of your magic, but I don't understand the reason why you would try to improve that form, when you really shouldn't worry about it having the powers of Meliodas and Ban in your body. Izuku yes, about that the truth is I can't stay calm knowing that the Demon King is trying to do something outside of these parts, so I try to have the best possible capacity, so that when the time comes I can face him in the end I imagine that the Demon King will have become as strong as I am. He mentioned it to her, making her understand the situation they were going through, since she could only relax where she was. Izuku well, after talking to the goddesses I must imagine that things are getting closer to their end, surely not everything will turn out as well as we can imagine. Hey me but you have to be a little more careful, they can surely attack at any moment, and we can't risk it like this. Izuku maybe, but in the meantime I can only enjoy his company. He spoke to them with a smile, making the girls blush a little, trying to ignore the young man's words. Gother I think I have something you might care about. Izuku really? Say it because I can't wait to receive new news. Gother well, let's say that lately there is more demonic energy in the area, it seems that demons like the commandments are making deals with villains, and if that is the case we will not have good news at the end of the day, it will simply be impossible to keep things under control while we continue like this, and apart from that the bar sales are going down. These words surprised the young man who became excited about the case. Izuku how is it possible? We can't lower sales, we have to be the best bar around, it's really impossible for someone to have something better than us. At that, all the girls started hitting him on the head for his reaction to the bar, where they only reproached the young man for having no choice but to accept the situation. Izuku it's okay, there's no need for you to act like that, I actually find myself knowing that kind of things because it's normal for demons to try to do something, and even more so, considering that they want to see me dead, especially since I represent a threat to the entire world. He made it clear to them, making everyone understand the situation they were in at that moment. In another sector there was a portal opening where the commandments entered with a firm step, behind them the villains were entering seeing the purgatory apart from having seals to prevent them from having side effects when entering such a place. 
Just seeing the area they were surprised because that really showed the potential of the demons, living, being born and growing in that place was truly a test to be able to become stronger with their mere presence. They walked all over the place until they reached a castle where upon entering they only managed to continue for a while, until they reached a throne where the demon king himself was sitting without having any problem. Zeldra's father, we have already arrived and we brought with us our allies from the human world, with your help, we will have the opportunity to go against all the capital sins, so they will no longer be a threat to our kingdom. Esterasa and we will all be able to enjoy in the best possible way the luxuries that we will have in our new world. The demons would bow down to their king, although the villains clearly didn't understand these customs and did nothing. Aland. If you wish to live, it is great advice that you kneel before the king. Demura. In fact, I prefer to check the level of their king using our best fighter. His words were heard by everyone who saw him for such a thing while he opened his arms making clear the intentions he had. Zeldris remember that we came here to get more demon energy, and without our father's approval, then you will have nothing. The Mura will know once we contested Gigantomachia attacks. Immediately Gigantomachia appeared who grew huge before hitting the floor and letting out a roar against the king. He went towards him while his roar grew louder as his size increased, but when he arrived in front of the king, he stepped on the floor with a strong stomp, causing a bridge to be generated in front of them where Gigantomachia was located. A thin bridge where the being stopped and more so when underneath him there was a huge amount of dark matter. The king only happened to get up before Gigantomachia who remained deeply still, unable to move in front of the man who once standing was twice the size of Gigantomachia who remained motionless. Demon King are you really bringing me this trash? It was his question before Gigantomachia was split in half, losing his arms as legs before falling into that darkness, surprising the villains by seeing how that supposedly perfect Nomu was torn to pieces in front of the man. He managed to get to the front of everyone where he dropped his weapon where the villains only knelt immediately, knowing that they no longer had any chance against that being of clearly superior power. Demon King if we can really only depend on these weak humans to be able to enter our new world and conquer everything, I will accept, but first they must be stronger. They cannot say that they represent the Demon King having such meager fighting power like this. After his words they felt a tremor before seeing how a gigantic hand came out of that dark pit from which an arm was raised and managed to rest on the floor. Little by little the body of the new Gigantomachia was coming out, which had the dark matter that little by little unified its back and arms, so that it was complete again surprising the group by the same thing, before it finished regenerating completely. It only gave a roar that echoed throughout the place, leaving those villains shocked by what they saw. Demon King the time for the demons to take control again is very close. These were his words as dark clouds from the sky let out their reddish rays. Back on earth a young man was looking out the window at the night, standing up and completely naked. Behind him was Melissa who hugged him from behind. Melissa. Is something wrong? You don't look so well. Izuku it's nothing, it just happens that I've been thinking about the future for a while the demons are getting closer, the goddesses too, and I have no idea which side will win. The young woman then strengthened her hug before Momo arrived to give her the same hug and Jiro. Jiro you should calm down a little, you know perfectly well that we can try to do everything possible to accompany you. Momo especially since we don't plan on leaving you this time. The three girls seemed more than united with the young man who accepted the situation by taking them by the hands. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.